If you found this video, you're probably trying to decide between these three cameras, the Fujifilm XS10, the Fujifilm XE4, and the Fujifilm X-T32. And I'm hoping this video is going to help you make the right decision for which camera is right for you. <laughs> I did want to give a shout out to Borrow Lenses who provided the Fujifilm X-E4 and the Fujifilm X-T32 for me to kind of try out and test out so that I can compare all three together. Borrowing camera gear is actually one of like the secret hacks of being able to make the right purchasing decision. You can go to borrowlenses.com and borrow one of these cameras for like seven days, try it out. You can borrow all three of them and try it out next to each other and then see which one feels the best so that you know and you can be confident in buying the right camera for you. Check out barlenses.com, link in the description below. The sensor and the processor of these three cameras are all exactly the same. They all use the X-Trans 4 APS-C CMOS sensor and the image quality, the sharpness, and the color science of this sensor and processor combination is outstanding. And you also have to know that it has the same processor and same sensor as their quote unquote older brothers, the X-T3, the X-T4, and the X-Pro3. So keep that in mind that you're not really getting a lesser tier camera in terms of image quality. Also the ISO ranges from from these three cameras is exactly the same going from the base ISO of 160 all the way to ISO 12800. They also have identical movie capabilities that do 4K at 30 frames per second and 1080p at 240 frames per second. And then one other shared thing across all three cameras is that they all have the same exact viewfinder which is a 0.39 inch viewfinder that has 2.36 million dots and I will say that these three viewfinders are smaller than the ones that come on the XT3, the XT4, and the newer XH2S is a lot bigger and brighter, but when you're in this $1,000 or less range, you're going to kind of have to stomach the smaller viewfinder. So now that we got all the similarities out of the way, how do we make the decision between these three? So it comes down to the main differences between the camera. And first is the price. So the X-E4 is the cheapest at 849 US dollars. And then next step after that, we have the X-T32, which is at $899. And then from there, there is a big step up going to the XS10, which is at $999. So if price is your main objective, you're going to want to go with the X-E4 as far as the cheapest camera. And then the step up, you're going to have the X-T32, which does have a lot of different manual features that you may want to upgrade to but if you want all the different features including what I'm going to talk about next you're going to want to go with the XS10 for that kind of like full suite of different features. <music> So one of the major differences between all three bodies is that the X-E4 and the X-T32 do not have IBIS, which is in-body image stabilization, where the X-S10 does. So in-body image stabilization is basically when the sensor is kind of suspended and has a way to kind of compensate for any type of vibration or shakes of the camera. And this really helps when it comes to low light photography, where you want to avoid camera shake at those slower shutter speeds, or if you're looking to do videography and you want to have kind of smoother footage, smoother handheld footage specifically in comparison to without any type of stabilization. I do want to make the caveat that when it comes to photography of people or anything moving, in-body image stabilization does not do anything to counteract the motion blur of your subject. It only counteracts camera shake of your hands or the vibration of your environment. So if you're looking to photograph people, children, low light, kind of like documentary subjects, wedding photography, the in-body image stabilization isn't going to really do anything for that so don't really think it's a consideration for that type of still photography but again if low light scenes and videography are really kind of something you're going to be doing a lot of then the XS10 may be something you want to look at but when it comes to purely still photography usually you can compensate with just shutter speed to get those sharp photos so the XE4 and the XE32 are still going to be very solid when it comes to low light photography and you're mainly going to want to compensate with larger aperture lenses <laughs> So the next major difference between these three cameras is really the screen. So when it comes to the X-T32, this is gonna be the main kind of like photography centric screen where you have kind of like a center oriented screen that just tilts. So the tilting screen is great for low angle shots, high angle shots, and I like the center screen for photography because it lets you keep your composition in line with the subject right here. 
And the other thing too is for any type of street photography, it's gonna be more discreet because it keeps it in line with the lens rather than sticking out to the side, which that is an issue that comes with the XS10. So the XS10 has a screen, which is kind of called the fully articulated screen. And this is more popular with um, kind of like videography, vlogging and taking selfies and that kind of thing. So if you're looking to do videography or vlogs of yourself, this is really awesome to turn it back and look at yourself. The other thing too is a lot of people like to close it and kind of put it away like that to protect the screen but when it comes to photography it is a little annoying to me to have to put it out to the side to do low angle shots and then what you see in the middle you have to kind of look off to the side in order to <laughs> compose it and fix it and at this point i'm pretty used to it but i still don't prefer it also for kind of like high angle or low angle shots it's just too much effort to kind of move it out all, all the way to the side so that i don't really really like but i kind of live with it with the xc4 it kind of has the same thing as the xc32 where it does have a tilt screen for low angle and high angle shots and then you can also move it all the way out like this to flip it and look at yourself for any type of selfies or anything like that and i think the main appeal of this is for more casual shooters who want to be in the photos or if you're doing travel or anything like that it can be helpful in a pinch when it comes to videography but most of the time when you're doing vlogs you're going to use the hot shoe at the top to have a off-camera mic that's not the internal mic so this will be blocking it a little bit so just think about that <music> If you're interested in having a flash be a part of your camera system, the XC4 does not have a built-in flash. So the XS10 does at the top right here, right there. And then so does the XT32 right there. So those are nice in a pinch if you want to use any type of built-in flash but i will let you know that when it comes to photography and you start growing into it the built-in flash doesn't really have the optimal positioning because it's straight in line and usually want to have the flash kind of pointed somewhere else or bouncing off a wall and also they don't have a lot of power so i think with the xc4 it's not too much of a downgrade because most of the time you're going to be wanting to get your own flash anyways even something a little small that you can point in different directions and also have a little bit of increased power and control so for me it's not really a downside that the xc4 doesn't have the built-in flash <music> So depending on the type of photography that you want to do and the type of shooting experience that you want to have, the button layouts between these three are very, very, very different. So first off, this is kind of like, again, a range style finder body. So it's going to have your viewfinder off to the side and it has a kind of minimal button layout. So you have at the top, you have a shutter speed dial and a compensation dial. This is really great for photography, at least learning and starting to understand your settings. And then you have the aperture dial here. You only have one front ring um, command dial and you don't have a rear command dial at the back. So I think for me, as far as someone who's doing a lot of manual controls, this is a little bit of a downside and you also have a reduced amount of buttons you don't have two buttons different for the autofocus lock and the auto exposure lock and you don't have function button on the front you only have one function button at the top so minimal setup if you're going to rely more on auto settings that's actually how i shoot this camera i don't like to shoot in auto but for this camera i've been shooting in auto a lot just because i don't have a lot of ability to fine tune everything i end up just using the shutter speed at the top and then have iso on auto and then i use the compensation here and put auto exposure lock on this button and then change the aperture that's how i shoot with this camera mainly for kind of like auto settings for travel and street stuff i think if you want to have an upgrade in terms of manual controls the xc32 is going to be the better bet for that because you have the shutter speed dial here you have the exposure compensation on this side you have the aperture dial with the lens and then you can have um, the front command dial be set to iso which is what i prefer and the rear command dial is going to fine tune the shutter speed so if you want to be an all manual photography shooter making sure that you have everything on the left hand side so you can have this hand always adjusting the aperture and not have to touch anything on this side the xc32 wins it in kind of like the button department you also have a separate auto exposure auto focus lock 
you have a function button at the top. I think overall, this one has the best kind of control layout for these three, at least for photography for me. If you're using an XC3 or an XC4 and you want to have a transferable control layout for like a second body, this is gonna be the better one. The XS10 has a little bit of a different type of way of shooting because it doesn't have the exposure dials. Instead, this one has a PSAM, which is a program shutter speed priority, aperture priority, and manual. And and the way that I set this camera up is in, I don't like the ISO being here. I actually set it to this one for the record, but basically I change the aperture, I change the ISO, and this one is for the shutter speed. This one, unfortunately, doesn't do anything in manual mode, but if you're using exposure compensation, this is what this does. And you can set this dial up to be anything you want. You can set it up to be at ISO, but I prefer having my ISO be something on the left-hand side. If you don't really care about that, you can set the ISO on this side, kind of match, kind of like the XT three and XC4 and kind of fixes that. The cool thing is this does have a dedicated record button, which is useful for videography or kind of hybrid photo and video. And then you also have this function dial can be set to ISO, but could also set to anything you want. You can do it to film simulations or anything like that. And then the other difference too, is this has actual custom modes set at the dial at the top, which can be used to set to different film simulations, which is what I use them for. One is for color and the other one is for black and white. So this type of style is mainly for those who are coming from like say Sony, familiar with those types of cameras, or people who are trying to not use the exposure dials as much and they prefer to just use the command dials. <music> Now let's talk about the ergonomics between these three cameras. The XS10 has the deepest grip and is going to be the most ergonomic when it comes to balancing the larger Fujifilm lenses. So if you're looking for those longer telephoto lenses, 1.4 aperture, 1.2 apertures, this is probably going to be the most comfortable. Or if you have larger hands, this is going to be the one that you should be looking at. The next kind of like step right there would be the XC32. While it doesn't have too much of a grip, it does have a little one, which makes it a little bit more comfortable for holding and balancing these larger aperture lenses but once you start getting into the bigger ones it does feel a little bit uncomfortable where you may be wanting to buy like an external grip or anything of some sort but for those who like to keep their camera stock this is going to be in the middle tier i wouldn't recommend having really large lenses on this one and then on the xe4 i would say this is probably the most uncomfortable camera to use when it comes to operating your camera with one hand like this without having your your hands underneath or if you're walking around trying to walk around and hold it. It feels like it's going to slip out. There's nothing in the front in order to kind of designate where your hand should be. And there's a lot of load on your pinky that's right underneath the camera. And I wouldn't recommend using a larger aperture lens like the 33 1.4, 56 1.2 on this camera too much without any type of additional grip or if you have one of those like thumb grips that you can put in the hot shoe. But when it comes to the reverse side, if you're thinking about compactness and for casual shooters that don't want anything too huge um, you could just reverse this right or if you have smaller hands this may be more comfortable for somebody that has smaller hands so just kind of thinking about the ergonomics for the grip as well as the capabilities of how well it will balance with lenses that you're looking for and you're planning to invest in in the future when it comes to size and weight, the XE4 is going to be the winner in almost everything when it comes to the smallest camera. So this is the thinnest one, and this is also the, the lightest camera between the bunch. And then between the XE30 and the XE4, there isn't actually too much of a difference because the XT32 is only 14 grams heavier, so it's not that much heavier. And I think having the slight increase in the bump of the grip is a good compromise when it comes to that if you're going to think about which is the largest one. Um, um, this is going to be, even though it is still kind of compact between all three, it is the least compact between the bunch. That is the other consideration there. You the last consideration to think about these three cameras is the battery life. They all have the same battery, but they actually have different efficiencies when it comes to that. So the X-T4 actually has an estimated 460 frames with one battery. The X-T32 has an estimated of 390 frames with one battery charge. And the X-S10 actually does the worst at 325 shots with one battery charge. The main difference between that, I think, is because it's powering the IBIS unit and it is considerably noticeable when in comparison to say like using with these other cameras if you're going to want be somebody who doesn't 
want to charge your battery often or is only going to invest in one battery if a longer battery life is important to you then the xe4 is going to win out on that but i would also always recommend that people get one to two extra batteries for your fujifilm cameras especially for these types of batteries because you're going to want to have the opportunity to photograph longer during the day or you can also invest in a usb-c charger those all these three cameras can be charged with usb-c and that's a really cool thing to be able to do so you can charge it with a power bank while you're not photographing maybe you're driving or traveling on a bus or a train or airplane that is an option too so now I want to make some final conclusions about which camera is best for what. For the overall best for stills photography and starting from zero and really graduating and like investing into the Fujifilm system, I think the XC32, probably the most, the least popular between these three cameras, but is probably the best one I think for still photography because it has the most amount of manual controls and it still has the center tilt screen. I think having all these three will make you be able to really take full control of your photographs and I also forgot to mention it is the only one that still has the MCS uh, manual continuous and single autofocus control the other cameras don't have that thinking about having a front rear command dial with a function button compensation shutter speed and the MCS dial this is like the full suite of being able to control your camera whereas the other three don't have that amount of man manual control so they're for different types of photography or videography experiences for these two ultimately the XC32 I feel like with the slight increase in price you're getting the most compromise and uh, between the feature set having a compact body having a nice grip to balance with the future lenses and that again that full control of your photography experience <music> When it comes to hybrid or videography, doing photo and video, stills and video, anything like that, the XS10 is going to be where you're at, mainly because it has the in-body image stabilization so that you can have the smoother video and you're also gonna have this flip out screen so you can flip it out and frame your composition for any time you're going to be in the video or need to reference the footage or anything like that. Also for those who care about like the deeper ergonomics of the grip, this is gonna be the best one for that and also deeper grip helps with that video videography experience really getting that stable footage so again photo and video hybrid capability the xs10 is going to be where it's at or if you're looking for the most ergonomic in terms of comfort with the expense of some customization of the controls that the xc32 has an advantage with <music> So last but not least, the XC4. This is gonna be for those who are casual shooters or for those who want the lightest and the most inconspicuous setup. So it's the smallest body. It has the least amount of flashy buttons and controls and anything like that. And also is the most pleasurable when it comes to kind of an automatic photography experience where you really wanna focus more on photographing and less on like flipping dials and pushing buttons and all those kind of things. So the XC4 is gonna be that small package for those who are looking to get into photography or for those who want a very minimal experience similar to something like an X100V or a Leica camera if for that matter. You don't have the optical viewfinder but you have that experience of having rangefinder so you can use your right eye and use your left eye to kind of see around. So for someone who's doing those type of approach to still photography I think this XC4 is going to be where it's at. So with that it would also be the best probably for travel because it's the smallest easiest to pack easiest to take around and it also has the best battery life. And with that, my name is Reggie Ballesteros. If you like this video, please give it a like. And if you loved it, please consider subscribing for more Fujifilm or photography content in the future.